It's Saturday, December 29th, 2001. To date, your tips have led to the capture of 688 fugitives. Tonight on America's Most Wanted, America Fights Back. No! God! What do you got? Car went in. Somebody's trapped in there. We pay tribute to some extraordinary heroes, the cops who went above and beyond the call of duty. He was trying to kill me, flat out assassinate me. And I wasn't going to go down without a fight. I was shot in the forearm, the side, the pelvis, just below the heart. From images that will live with us forever to moments of bravery we will never forget. I heard the call enough for help. All I could respond back was, come towards my voice. Keep on coming. Can you hear me? I kept on talking. Join some of Hollywood's top celebrities as we honor America's top cops. Every police officer is a hero in waiting should the situation arise. And you'll find out who's named America's Top Cop of the Year tonight on a special America's Most Wanted, where America fights back. And now, from the Warner Theater in Washington, D.C., John Walsh. Now, if there was ever a time to honor the police officers of this nation, this is that moment. Now, as perhaps never before, we've come to understand that police officers are of a different breed. Brave men and women who put their lives on the line every single day without a moment's hesitation. Tonight, I have the incredible privilege of honoring the top cops from all over this great nation. And we begin with those brave officers who are in all of our hearts and in all of our thoughts. Those who answered the call on the they morning They call of police officers the thin blue line. They're the final barrier that stands between chaos and the public. It takes a hero to join the thin blue line. But a hero isn't born because he puts on a badge and holsters a gun. A hero is who you are inside and what you do every day. The bad guy from our next Top Cops case didn't understand that. He just wanted to wear a badge to boost his own sick ego. He was a sociopath who couldn't cut it in the academy, so he took it out on real cops but he took on the wrong team. In a minute, you're gonna meet five top cops from the Edina, Minnesota Police Department. They held firm the thin blue line against chaos. The Cincinnati Police Academy. It's where recruits are pushed to their limits, mentally and physically, to see if they have what it takes to make the cut. In 1996, David White was in the program, and according to his instructor at the time, Roger Wolf, White didn't quite fit the mold. We teach people to, uh, to shoot center mass, is what they call it, which is the biggest part of, of the human body, which is the chest and torso. you're doing what when I do something wrong here she's putting a nice little group in the heads of the targets it causes us some concern maybe he's bored maybe he's for whatever reason uh, amusing himself I, I don't know what you want to remember in the takedown is to never let the perpetrator get on the top wait 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 back up wait wait what was that all about? You need to stick to the plan, you hear me? What, like this is my fault? Did you hear me? Hey, hey, come on, take a walk. David didn't come stop. On, he doesn't have a lot of self-control. Take a walk. He took this very, very down. personally. There was a lot of aggression there. That's when I think we decided that uh, we needed to have him evaluated. David White was kicked out of the academy. And soon this wannabe cop became a real life criminal. White turned to armed robbery, hitting banks up and down the West Coast, as well as in Tennessee, Ohio, and Wisconsin. He also targeted banks in Edina, Minnesota. And on November 16, 2000, White struck again in this exact bank in Edina. All right, everyone down. This is the robbery. Get down. You down. Get down. Put the money in the bag and move it fast. My drugs is not clean enough. Get down. Get down. Okay. Okay. 
Come on, Wendy. Huh? Edina 911. Hi, this is Glenn Walters with the First Star Bank in Edina. We've got a robbery in progress. Well, I was uh, in dispatch at, actually when the call came in that there was a robbery in progress of a man with a gun. So I knew it was simply a serious incident, and I knew the officers would start to answer to respond to the location. Officer Mike Blood arrived on the scene first. He was less than a month away from retiring. It was just a few seconds after I stopped, I saw a man walking towards me. Evidently, he'd been hiding there and was waiting for me to pull in. And I realized if I stayed there, I was dead. So I exited the squad as fast as I could. When he hit me in the leg, it took out my right leg, both bones and most of the muscle. Officer hit! Officer hit! And then I realized that my only chance was to play dead. And he put two more bullets in my back. Officer Blood's radio call of officer hit put a Dyna police on full alert. While Officer Blood fought to stay alive, he gave police a description of White's getaway vehicle. Suspect is fleeing in a green Ford Explorer. Officer Shelby Lane had to make a split-second decision. Go after the suspect, or come to the aid of a fallen cop. My first reaction is, oh my god, is he gonna make it? Eye on me, Mike! Are you I immediately okay? started Are you scanning okay? from head to toe and his whole back was soaked with blood, and I saw a large hole on the left side of his waist. Talk to me. And I needed something to block the hole, okay. so I just used my fist to plug the hole and just applied direct pressure, and I can't have him die on me. As Officer Lane kept Officer Blood alive, the pursuit of White began. 21-year veteran Billy Moyer picked up the chase. Valley View. And he immediately dynamites the brakes right in the middle of the road. Probably the most dramatic round was the one that was intended for my head and vaporized the spotlight. Pieces of glass and plastic and lead embedded in my face. He was trying to kill me, flat out assassinate me. No ifs, ands, or buts, and I wasn't going to go down without a fight. And uh, put the car in drive and it won't go. It's dead. To say that I was upset was kind of understatement. Moments later, shift supervisor Scott Kuiper had left the dispatch room and picked up the pursuit. His men had been fired upon, and he was out for justice. Oh, now this guy's pissing me off. He's shooting up my people. And then when they started getting seriously injured and in danger, I, I take it personally. Scott Kuiper was soon joined in the pursuit by Officer Jim Rigg. I knew we were coming to where the intersection of the roadway ended and became a T intersection. Due to my experience on previous pursuits, I figured the subject would crash. Officer Piper was right. The back tire on White's Explorer blew out after it had hit the curb. As I came around, he was bringing his rifle up to bear at me. It was a tough shot in that there was only the top quarter of his head exposed. All I really see is the soles of his feet pointing towards us. And I can see him moving, and then it stops. It was all over. David White would die just a few hours later. But this incident would live with these brave cops forever. I'm proud of how our department reacted that day. Everyone from the dispatchers that took the call and passed the information right down to my performance, I'd do it again. Next. We 
pick the top cop of the year. Who will it be? Now it's time to get busy and open this envelope. All right. Okay. The top cop, the winner of this prestigious award, is actually a bunch of winners. The Indina, Minnesota crew. All right. All right. Officers Michael Blood, Shelby Lane, Billy Moyer, Jim Rigg, and Sergeant Scott Piper. Being on the job for 21 years, uh, it doesn't prepare you for this. Thank you very much. Uh, somebody already said there are no losers in this room. We are here to do our job. Call us, we'll come. Thank you. Cops, chaos would cross right over the thin blue line and invade society. The world is changing in profound ways. So let's be honest, there are some dark and scary days ahead of us. We all know that. But we all know that the good will triumph over evil if we just keep fighting the good fight. I'm John Walsh. It's been an incredible, incredible evening. I really know the sacrifices you make. And don't ever forget that we appreciate it and I know that you do make a difference. God bless you and be safe.